Welcome back to another Battle Wagon adventure. Last night I ran the mysterious Battle Wagon announcement device and I stored it in the glove box. I had to pull out the most of the center console, the radio, the DIN, the cigarette lighter, all that stuff got pulled out. I pulled it all out to both try to run the wires and as well as trying to find a home somewhere in the center console for the CB radio just so that it would be uh, a nice presentable location with easy access. While I was pulling everything out I said, you know, I'm not really a fan of this stock Subaru radio. Subaru radios, if you're not familiar, are uh, not the best from the factory. And additionally, I found this CD and it sounds like a cross between bulk music and, you know, metal, I guess. I don't even know who the artist is. And it's so bad that if this is what CDs have come to, I don't want a CD player anymore. On that grounds, I have gone out and bought the Boss 612 ua this was on amazon for 20 something dollars and then the adapter was another seven really all i wanted was an aux input so for about a total price of 35 dollars including the aux cable this is gonna do that if it sounds bad it probably won't be much worse than the factory subaru radio no offense subaru but your early 2000s radios are not necessarily the epitome of engineering this is the boss radio out of its shell it's clearly a cheap plastic front i'm a little worried that this big front cover that sticks out a lot is going to be either not sitting well or block part of the din when i install it for comparison here's the factory subaru radio this is about the same size you can see it's a little bit taller top and bottom from this front plate on the on the edges width wise it's again about the same but you got this area here that's overhanging so it's just for that reason i'm hoping it doesn't interfere with the the din slot that goes below it because you're not limited by the cd player taking up at least the size of a cd it is substantially shorter as far as depth than the factory radio this might not make a difference to most people but because this is clearly a designated racing mobile this is substantially lighter than the factory subaru radio is as well i mean this thing is maybe this is a big maybe a third of the weight i mean the other ones are freaking brick by comparison so because this is a race car but i still want a radio in it i've opted for the lightweight cd delete mod of course i think this mod will shave my track times at the nurberg ring which i habitually race by about um i would say that's like 30 seconds a lap probably it's not hard to do when you have a 35 minute lap time but hey for anyone who has never done an aftermarket head unit before this is the subaru and this is uh specific to your car and then the radio has its outputs on the other side that plug into the back and basically what you just do is line up the different wires that are the same color and that's it's really that simple it's pretty easy you can crimp them you can solder them if you want i was too lazy to go through the effort of soldering all these because none of them were pre-tinned i've also seen people just take electrical tape and tie them together but that is freaking ghetto and that fails if you want to keep the car for any real amount of time and if you're going to be putting it through hell and potentially off-roading it i recommend at least crimping it together since i've already got all this crimped and this is all ready to go back in i'm just going to pray to zeus that everything lines up well and start reinstalling and hope for the best this is actually the first time i've done a head unit in a car that's aftermarket so uh yeah we're gonna just keep our fingers crossed on this one i have no idea what i'm doing per usual In what is entirely an unsurprising turn of events, all of the factory mounting hardware is far too big in diameter for these holes on the side. As far as uh, trying to get it in, there's no point of trying. So I'm going to go and look around, see if I got some smaller hardware that's, you know, even maybe not necessarily that short, but short enough. And uh, figure out what it's going to take to get this thing mounted in. Assuming I've got the hardware, I can get these brackets on, both that and the one that I still got here hanging off. That one's just hanging off because it's grounded, and I didn't want to rip out the ground because it was in there pretty good. If I got that hardware on hand, I can slap this in and get that all figured out. Do battle wagon stuff with it. Like playing the soundtrack of Asian pornography, of which I am, of course, considered a local connoisseur. Can you even be a pornography connoisseur? Is that a thing? Where do you sign up for that? 
After some searching, I was able to easily locate two pieces of Battle Wagon trademark hardware. The only concern is that this is about a one inch bolt and um, that says eight Mima Max. This leads me to believe one of two things, either whoever was writing this down was taking directions from an individual who had a stutter, or, and I think this is a substantially less likely option, it's just listed in metric. Well, I'm not real good at conversions, but I'm pretty sure that eight millimeters is approximately more than this. But all jokes aside, there's absolutely nothing. If you look through here, right, there's nothing in the way that this is gonna hit or interfere with or otherwise cause issues with it. I'm only putting one on each side. So is it really gonna be a problem? No. So fuck it, battle wagon. Based on how small these bolt heads are, I'm thinking washers aren't gonna be a bad idea in this application. As you can tell probably by me sitting here playing with it incessantly, I'm worried about this being able to open and close even relatively smoothly with this mounted above it so tight. What I can do in this situation is either sand down or dremel off the edge of either the back of this on the DIN or on the lower half of this bracket on the bottom of the radio. Because I'm not positive it'll be an issue yet with it not being mounted, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead, mount everything in, see how it lines up, and whether or not it even is an issue and then if it is i can pull it back out while everything is still apart and then um, remedy the situation then So here we are, I have the center DIN and the radio both installed. Oh, that's bad. As you can see here, the DIN is definitely rubbing pretty hard against the bottom of that radio. So what I'm gonna do is um, just leave it and ignore it because I'm too lazy and I pretty much never, ever, ever, ever use the DIN for anything at any point. Before I finish buttoning up the rest of the center console, what I'm gonna be doing now is just test firing it, so to speak. I'm gonna turn on the car and hope it works like I need it to work. Plug in the aux cable and just make sure everything is functioning as it should be functioning. Here we go, this is the moment of truth. Oh, there we go. Wow. This is pretty sad, but this 20 something dollar radio sounds better and more clear than the factory radio in the car. What I did there was use the fade in the left, right, make sure all the speakers are working. Again, try to do it while the car is uh, not buttoned up because it sucks to get there and find out you have one loose wire. I'm going to now try the aux input. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Beautiful. That is exactly what I wanted to happen. There you have it. My $20 radio now sounds better than my factory Subaru radio. And it has an aux input and gets rid of the dated Scottish uh, metal folk music. Yeah, take that Marjorie. Previous owner Marjorie, she must have been an interesting freaking character if she was just listening to that and just charging around running into shit. But anyway, I'm gonna button this all back up. I'm gonna hope the DIN still works and that this is not um, blocking everything from going back in nicely. If it is, I'm just gonna have to find a way to cut it, which is not what I really want to do. My worst fears have been realized. The frame around the radio is too big and I just can't press it in. So now I've got to pull all that off and unbolt the radio from the brackets and hope that that front rim comes off on its own. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start cutting it. 
which is not what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna do all that and then reassemble it and let you know how that works. Now I feel incredibly stupid because I went through the effort of pulling everything out, got the radio off, and then um, turns out this frame just pops off the front. There was only a couple quick plastic clips in the back, which even if they were permanent clips, it wouldn't have mattered if I broke them because it's not like I'm really gonna be transferring this to other vehicles. So I feel stupid. Now I gotta put it back together having just wasted, it wasn't that much time, but still, I wasted like a whole extra three and a half minutes. Here we are with the center console upper piece back in. I have the front trim piece off of the radio and I never thought I'd say this is about a $20 radio, but it actually fits pretty well, I'm surprised. It also solved my DIN issue, unsurprisingly, when I took the, uh, border off of it and I'm reasonably impressed. It's not like an overstated radio, which is good. I didn't want something that was chrome and obnoxious, but it actually looks decent there. You can tell it's cheap plastic, but it's the battle wagon. It's a 2003 Subaru. It doesn't need to look great. The whole dash is plastic anyway, so who really cares? Now I'm going to continue with the rest of the center console, get this thing buttoned up. And by simply playing with my knob, the battle wagon is back together and ready to go. I hope you have enjoyed this battle wagon adventure. My knob certainly has. As always, stay tuned. Once a lot of these final little touches are complete, the battle wagon will see a lot more road time and have a lot more on the move adventures. Thank you and stay tuned. After some searching, I was easily able to locate two battle battle, battle battle. After some vigorous searching, I was able to locate two battle ma battle wagon. Battle Magan! And by simply by... And with simply pen... And by simply just playing with my knob...